let's let's shift gears back to um, sort of looking at the future on the business side, which is what companies and prospects that you're out there talking to today uh, do you think are your best opportunities for new partnerships, new licensing agreements? Uh, I know top tier operators like Honda have been mentioned. Uh, and, and in which product categories are you seeing the most active uh, inquiries? Like what's coming in? What are your inbounds? What are you going out with in, in sort of what markets? Um, and, you know, I guess the one that always goes along with that is could you end up uh, partnering with, uh, with a Lindy uh, in the same neighborhood as a Bosch, you know? Uh, and any, any industrial gas companies would be interesting, that kind of thing. So, so who's coming in uh, and in what, what categories? Yeah, okay. I mean, if you, if you step back to the themes first, I mean, we, we've been at this for quite a long time. So uh, I guess the themes that come out, the consistent theme that's been around for the last decade is, is bigger. And that's accelerating. So a few years ago, it was micro CHP. Three or four years ago, it was 10 kilowatts with companies like Bosch. Deep Sun are working on hundreds of kilowatts. So away try. That's accelerated. I mean, in the last 18 months, we must have had a dozen interesting applications around uh, megawatt scale systems for marine and, and distributed uh, grid reinforcement and those sorts of applications. So, so scale is growing. And I think that probably tells you a bit about who are the likely customers. They're the people that make grid scale equipment. That's um, a narrower list, yeah. <laughs> so it's a, it's a narrower list. It makes biz dev a lot easier. You, you can go and talk to a much shorter list of the people. You have to kiss a few less frogs um, to, find, to find your printers. Um, I think the second, the second big theme over the last few years is, for us, it's about fuel flexibility and, and the, the different applications that enables. So a few years ago, it was, could we run on diesel? Could we run on natural gas? Could we run on hydrogen? And that, that sort of triad is really interesting for a lot of people. Today, there's a whole new range of future fuels that are emerging. And again, it tells you about the sort of people that are really interested. Um, so future fuels are things like synthetic or green methanol, green methane, biogas, ammonia, hydrogen, those sorts of things. And when you look at those, you say, well, what, what industries are really interested in those types of fuels? And it's things like marine, it's things like heavy duty transport for other things, lots of grid reinforcement. Um, so there's in the fuel cell side, I think it's, it's going to be a slight shift to a narrower set of people that make big equipment, but are more interested in more aggressive decarbonisation targets that require those new fuels like, like ammonia and the others we've listed. On the gases side and the electrolysis side, um, again, that, that industrial gases space, it's a pretty short list of names if you if you look at the top 70 or 80% of um, getting shorter production. So sure, we've got those sorts of conversations going off. We, we talk to all of those people on a pretty regular basis. And, and again, they're excited. Um, I think all of them are truly engaged with, with what they're doing. I mean, the, the most obvious one, and I can talk about one we're not talking to particularly actively, you can see how central to the Hydrogen Council Air Liquide have been over the last few years. These companies are making big, again, big corporate bets. The corporate mind is sold on doing something different. And I, I don't think any of those industrial gases companies have a radically different corporate mind, actually. So I'm, I'm pretty sure you, you, if you roll forward in time, those are the sorts of companies you'll see electrolysis, commercial activity on. I'm, I think they're not the only ones. The, the other big investors in this area are the steel companies. When you look at ways of decarbonizing steel, green hydrogen is probably one of the lowest cost routes to green steel. And you, you'll probably be aware of the SSAB um, bid or uh, uh, projects in, in Scandinavia where they're investing billions over the next decade to really solely focus on green steel. So industrial gases, steel, really hard to abate industrial sectors are where we'll probably see most commercial traction. But then on top of that, we've got two licensing manufacturers for our core stack technology. We're probably not going to have 10 manufacturing licensees, but I think over the next couple of years, you'll see us bring more stack manufacturing license licensees on because we need that to service new geographies and new applications.